you might want to take a moment to pause the video at the very beginning so that you can have a go at this question by yourself before we start actually going through it together. So this is um, quite a common GCSE question. Um, this is from a past AQA paper, but um, I've seen them on similar OCR and Edexcel papers as well. So we're just going to work through it and explain how um, we get to each section. Um, something that I do is I use highlighters um, to highlight data, so numbers that you get given that you're expected to use in calculations or important things. Um, so let's start off and read through uh, the question. So the miners working in a salt mine use smooth wooden slides to move quickly from one level to another. So it tells us here that the vertical drop is 15 metres and shows us with an arrow. It's really important that you look at diagrams because um, there's often really important information in the diagrams. You need to make sure that you uh, include all that information. Um, it then tells us that there's a miner of mass 90 kilograms that travels down the slide. And then the next bit, calculate the change in gravitational potential energy of the miner when he moves 15 metres vertically downwards. OK, so there's that 15 metres again. Gravitational field strength equals 10 newtons per kilogram. Show clearly how you work out your answer. Um, so this is quite a basic start to a question. Um, something that's important to remember is this gravitational field strength, and this is what we would call G. Um, sometimes you have to use 9.8, sometimes you use 10, but they would give it in the question, so um, or always kind of keep an eye out for this. Uh, we know that the symbol for um, mass is M, and we know that vertically, if we're giving something in metres, that's a distance. And if it's a vertical distance, we'd call that height, which would be H. So we've got M, H and G. And it's asking us to work out gravitational potential energy, which I would call EP. But you could also call GPE if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. It's just the abbreviation. So the first thing that personally I would do is I would write out the equation. So EP equals M. G H. This is one of the equations that you need to learn off by heart. And then underneath each of these letters, you would write down the relevant value. So M is 90, G is 10, and then H is 15. And then we're just going to put that into a calculator. And it gives us uh, 13,500 joules. So you can either leave that there and you'll still gain marks for it, but it's always useful just to make it really clear to your examiner that you know exactly what the uh, answer is by putting it into the relevant section. OK, so that's the first part of this question. So then we're going to move on um, to the next part. So we're going to get our highlighters again. So remember that purple we've been using for data. So calculate the maximum possible speed. So calculate the maximum possible speed that the miner could reach at the bottom of the slide. Show clearly how you work out your answer. Give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So those are the two really important bits of information that we need. One of which is telling us what we need to do and the other um, will be important later on. So let's have a look at this first. So calculate the maximum possible speed. We know that speed is referred to as V um, and it's at the bottom of the slide. So I suppose we could um, highlight that as well. That's important. Um, now, you're, often people's uh, first reaction is that they know that speed equals distance divided by time. So they kind of go to this, um, this equation that you've been learning about probably since year seven um, and they think okay speed equals distance divided by time oh well I've got a distance but I haven't got a time and then they just put in any random number and they don't get the right answer and that's because we're not just looking at um, speed equals distance divided by time we're looking at other equations that have got v in that are related to the bigger picture of this so what we need to think about is what do we know about um, when something is falling or when something is sliding down? Well, we know that at the top, it's going to have lots of gravitational potential energy. But as this vertical height um, decreases, then we're going to have um, 
EP is going to decrease. So the gravitational potential energy store is going to decrease and the kinetic energy store will uh, increase. Okay, so EK. Well, K doesn't, doesn't really matter. So we know that in a perfect system, so this is what we would call conservation of energy. So in a perfect closed system, all of the gravitational potential energy that there is at the top will have been, um, it, sorry, in the gravitational potential energy store at the top will have been um, transferred into the kinetic energy store by the time the miner gets down to the bottom. So that's what you need to remember in these sorts of questions, because it's quite a common structure, um, these sorts of questions, where it asks you to work out gravitational potential energy and then ex it expects you to put together that the potential uh, energy store is going to decrease and the kinetic energy store is going to increase. So then we need to think about well, what is our equation for gravitational potential energy and hopefully we remember that EK is a half mv squared. So m is mass and we've got mass up here and then v is what we want to find out. So our kinetic energy is this number, it's whatever the uh, was in the gravitational potential energy store up here, that will become zero by the time it gets to the bottom and the kinetic energy store will have this much energy in it. So if we write out our equation, EK equals a half MV squared, and then do the same as we've done up here. So underneath EK, we want to write 13,500. A half is just 0 0.5. We know that the mass is 90, and then we know that it's v squared. So we can do this um, kind of uh, the same way that you would in math. So we're going to simplify this bit first. So a half times uh, 90. Hopefully you know that timesing something by a half is the same as dividing by 2. Um, so we've got 45 v squared is 13,500. So we want to get v squared by itself. At the moment we've got 45 v squared. So we're going to divide both sides by 45. So 13,500 divided by 45 gives us 300. But the question hasn't asked for v squared. The question has asked for v. So therefore if we want to do the square root of 300 is going to be equal to v. So if we just square root that then it gives us 17.32050, da, 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 okay? Now, the question hasn't asked us just to write this big long number, it's asked us to give it to an appropriate number of significant figures. So sometimes you will be told two significant figures, three significant figures, but knowing how many significant figures to, to give an answer to is part of um, kind of the math skills that they want you to be able to